Zapier enables you to link the different services and apps you use to automate your tasks. So by integrating Zapier with Glide, your app can interact with over 7,000 other tools. Now with the webhook action, you can already simply just send information from Glide to Zapier. You don't have to set up an integration. But when you integrate Zapier with Glide, your workflows can directly manipulate your app's data, automating the adding, editing, and deletion of data, and also allowing you to search and query that data right inside your Zapier workflows. In this video, we're gonna go over the basic concepts of Zapier. We'll look at how to trigger a Zap with a webhook from Glide, and then how to integrate Glide with Zapier so that your Zap can access and change your Glide data. In the simplest form, a Zap has two parts, a trigger and an action. A trigger is something that happens to start a Zap, and then an action is an event a Zap performs after it's triggered. Now Zapier is an incredibly extensive platform and the permutations of what you can do are endless. But boiling it down to the essentials, you're gonna be doing one of the following things. Either you'll be triggering a Zap in Glide and then something will happen in Zapier, or something else will trigger your Zap, which then will do something or get something from Glide. Or alternatively, you'll be doing some mixture of both of these. We're gonna look at quite a basic example here so that you can see both sides of this workflow. Our app is gonna trigger our Zap with a webhook, sending the value that we enter here. Zapier will then change that data slightly and then send that data back, editing the original row in our table. Our very simple app here has a text box that lets us submit new rows to our table. On the submission of this new row, we want to send this data to Zapier and then do something with it. To do this, we'll add a webhook action as an after submit action on this form. We'll make this a custom action in case we need to expand what it does later. And also the action editor will allow us to see the run history for this action. The webhook needs a URL to send data to, and we can get this from our trigger in Zapier. Over in Zapier, we'll create a new Zap and choose webhook as our trigger and choose catch hook as the event. Zapier will then ask us to pick off a child key. Essentially, this is telling Zapier which exact part of the data to pick off from the main data that we're sending. Now, we'll see this in a minute when we actually send data from Glide, but it's typical for webhook payloads to include two keys the body, which is carrying the main data, and the endpoint, which is specifying the destination URL. What we want is the body. So if we specify the body key in here, Zappy will now know that we're after the main data from the JSON, and we'll be able to work with that in our Zap. Zapier then provides us with a webhook URL, and we can paste this into our Glide webhook action. Now, whenever you're sending data to other services, it's always important to have a row ID in your table. So we'll make sure we add this. So we'll send this in the request body, and then we'll send along the name column. Next, we'll trigger our action by adding a new row to our table. If we navigate to the action editor and look at the run history, we can see that the action was just triggered. And if we click on the run item, we can see the details of what happened and open the JSON that was sent. Here we can see we sent a very simple JSON body with two key value pairs, the row ID and the name column. And then Zapier sends back some simple details just to verify that this has been received. Back in our Zapier interface, if we refresh, we can see that a new request has come in and we can continue with the selected record. So that's how you trigger a Zap with a webhook. Next, let's work on doing something with this data in Zapier and then sending it back to Glide. Now that we've set up our trigger, we can add Glide as our action. In the event dropdown, we can see that we have five actions, add, edit, delete, get, and get all. We're gonna be editing our rows, so we'll select this and hit continue. Now we need to connect Glide with Zapier. After we hit sign in, we'll be taken to a page where Zapier asks for our API key. And in Glide, we can get this from our settings. We'll go to integrations and then add Zapier. This screen gives us access to our API key, which we'll copy and then paste it in to Zapier. After we hit yes, continue to Glide, Zapier will set up our integration. And back in Zapier, we can then hit continue. The first step now is to choose our app and then the table. And because our action here is to edit a row, we're also asked to specify the row ID so that Zapier knows which row to edit. Now in the JSON that we sent over earlier, we sent across the row ID, so we'll pick that here. Now, sometimes your columns will show up here, but if not, you can just hit refresh and they'll appear. Now we can see that we have both the name column and the timestamp column. In name, we'll enter the text echo and then pick our name value that was originally sent across in the webhook. 
This will just show us that Zapier has indeed received the information and is able to edit the values in this row. And for the timestamp, we'll use Zapier's built-in date and time function, which looks like this. If we test this step and then look in Glide, we'll see the changes appear in the data editor. And after we publish our Zap, every time we add a new row to our table, this data will get sent to Zapier, be edited, and then sent back to Glide. So that's a basic overview of the Zapier integration. We looked at the basic concepts of Zapier, how to trigger a Zap with a webhook from Glide without the Zapier integration, and then how to actually integrate Glide with Zapier so that Zapier can access your Glide data. So again, this has been a pretty bare bones example just to illustrate both sides of the way that you might work with Zapier. The main purpose of the Zapier integration is so that you can make things happen in Glide that aren't triggered by users in your app, whether that's automatically adding new Salesforce contacts, Notion database items, or regularly querying your Glide data and reporting on it in an external tool. To learn more about all the different things that you can do with Zapier, you can check out their university. And to see how members of the Glide community are using Zapier in their workflows, you can join the discussion over at glideapps.com community.